Well, I want a camera just like that. That's, uh, oh, that's okay. just perfect. They're bigger and bigger and smaller ones. So smaller than that? Oh yes. Uh, um, I think you're the, sacrificing lens quality. Okay. Focus it so that you're not looking at the glass. Uh, it's an auto focus. So oh, yeah. Problem. Really is magnificent. night mode. <laughs> so it's really uh, got a powerful CCD. Yeah, it's, um, it adjusts the, the um, exposure in some way. Hey, 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 so lovely to see you. you probably didn't even look at that, you probably just drove. Huh? Yeah, that's right. yeah. I saw a stall and I, I, I did a U-turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you
game. So I looked at this game and it looked familiar to me, the position. But I said, okay, and it's difficult. I couldn't solve it right away. So I spent the whole night. And I said to Lisa upstairs in the monastery, we live in the monastery in, in, in Varena. I said to her, it looks familiar. I can't put my finger exactly on what it is. And then I solved it. Beautiful. It's a pin with the rook's pin on opposite side. And the next morning I came down to him, I said, here's the solution, Hokan, but it looks familiar to me. He said, ah, I just wanted to check. I found it in the East German literature, and it said M. Pines. I just wanted to know if you were doing it. It's a famous ending by my father. It's in the Russian and East German literature. Did he tell you? He did. That's funny. That's funny. Because of you, I lost a night of sleep. <laughs> You owe me a night of sleep. <laughs> the other small world story is the fact that your student and Sol Solomon's student together ended up getting some prize. And I got a letter from Daniel asking for pictures of me and Bill Gilbert together. Oh, I see. Okay. So the only picture I have is me and Bill looking like mafia people with uh, sunglasses, <laughs> which he likes very much. It's a very small world. You saw Bill? Yeah. You know, he and I are uh, uh, old friends, so it's a very small world. And, and Bill said to me, wait a second, does Hocken do NMR? I said, yeah. Yes, he does some useful things as well. It's not all viruses and statistical mechanics. He does some NMR too. So, your wife told me to give you this. Oh my God. Come back to that. Charlie's going to show whenever he gets something comes over, then I'll come through. Come back in a second uh, and join you. Alex, uh, this is more gift from Sweden. You're a, oh. you're a so soccer fan. Well, you and I have overlapped so many times. I mean, yeah. we, we overlapped. We watched the game together at yeah. the Chorus Meeting Group yeah. um, in this, Italy. This is in remembrance of that song. We watched Denmark versus someone. I remember. Yeah, because we, that's correct. Because in the United States, you can't see soccer. And I'm a yeah. huge fan of soccer. Yeah. And so we've been at many conferences together. Okay, let me tell you. You will like it's not a bottle. bottle. No, it's not a bottle. Okay. <laughs> not a book. It's a, it's a soft package, as we would say. Yes, yeah, soft material. Yeah. Uh, fragile matter. Uh, fragile. I, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 
Terry a while, and LH does dinners for them. He brings in entertainment, often professional, to his house. And every weekend, uh, there's something going on, either in the lab, or at his house, or up for these fabulous dinners that he has an instinct for sponsoring. Uh, I should say, because of Alex, I found his uh, meetings and institution and place a kind of a mecca. Uh, and for me, it has enhanced my retirement uh, in a way I can't uh, describe. Uh, he is a magnificent uh, influence in establishing and promoting intellectuality and scholarship of NMR like a physicist more than the physicists do themselves. And he is a magnificent thinker, an expositor, and he twice won the teaching award. He is a uh, renowned and much in demand person in many, many ways, and he's a mensch. He's a great fellow, a kind person, and we all love him. And happy birthday, Alex. I'd like to say that the, uh, I have a few pictures to show, some of which are duplicates, but I shall be glad to give a further account of his career in many ways. He's a man of many facets, a man of all seasons, as you'll find. Okay. Okay, the first talk, as I said, I've announced it is by Gwen Shapiro, Asaf Thal, and Lucio Friedman. Of a human being. 
I can see you number one. <laughs> number two, you see Alex today, having gone through the world with the Africa, I've had a pleasure to learn how to play chess and doing uh, intellectual matters and things. And, and pianos. Uh, he now starts out as a graduate student uh, on the wall. And he is sitting here in a dreaming mood, thinking about the, and I saw the picture in Menzie, because of the fact that he perhaps would like to be a concert pianist instead, we don't know. And uh, there his life begins with a nice color hair. Here. Here, you see, you are looking skeptically at his data because he wants to pursue the land of the earth, the mysteries of nature, with vengeance. To see that, uh, in the next, <laughs> on the left, where he is with skepticism somewhat stunned or um, dismayed, we don't know which, uh, with regard to his resolution. Uh, on the right, Alex begins to develop kind of a, a tolerant view of life <laughs> by a nice smile on his face, like Mona Lisa kind of smile. <laughs> and uh, he's proceeding to enter the world uh, that recognizes his unusual talent. Uh, as we go on, we see Alex now completely engaging with normal life. Accidentally get into some of these pictures and I'm along with her. And uh, Alex is circulating now among the um, elite of the residence universe. Uh, he's now uh, accidentally in this picture of the happens to be a trio of cross relaxing individuals in the field with Al Oberhauser in the middle and the Pines cross relaxing. As well on his side. And uh, we uh, then go to an international group uh, from Heidelberg. We have Herbert Zimmerman in the middle and Ulrich Abraham on the right, and Alex Kabibili on the left, the usual Alex who internationally circulates. Forever and ever, ever, beginning to know everybody in the world. Here we have uh, a uh, comparison between before and after. Sydney uh, Alex now getting closer to 60, but not that much. And uh, we see the two most eminent resonators. Numerous ones that they're evidently connected. Now we come to Alex's lab. I have some points to make about this. Alex's is the walls are continually and diurnally or annually or monthly or weekly altered with all kinds of drawings, pictures, paintings, uh, and uh, sayings, you know what? And every time you go into his office, you've got something to display. Uh, which is like going into a museum of uh, contemporary art and sometimes not so contemporary. And uh, there you see the uh, generation of drawings that have since changed, but there you see um, Seaport having a nap. Uh, I'd like to point out that this room is the scene of many, many seminars, and I don't have a complete uh, display of all the environment there. But every Friday, there's a luncheon that serves anything from pizza to muscle ball soup uh, uh, for the participants. And it's a very convivial group. And I should point out that the lectures are, as I said before, carried out by graduate students, visiting scholars uh, all over the world, uh, contemporary and past, and to come, who will be future. Uh, <coughs> It is an endless source of discussion, humor, and uh, uh, spontaneous output of all kinds of uh, activity. 
Um, I can show you, for example, a cartoon of the typical gesticulations among people who argue and point out and discuss things on this inner orientation discussion. And this is probably a, a discussion involving uh, alpha and beta states and ups and downs and who knows what. Now, humor in Alex's group targeted uh, or mainly led by Alex himself, who is a superb humorist, I must say. Many of you don't know that he's a supreme imitator of eccentric people and accents, foreign and domestic. He is absolutely hilarious when he lets go. And uh, he's also ready with an apt quip. Uh, even when the scientific discussion is serious, he'll suddenly see something funny and bring it out. He has a technique for doing that. Uh, his humor is absolutely constructive and sometimes destructive. Uh, but it's really uh, hilarious. And I should point out that my uh, favorite diagram of humor is this is scientific humor. And then all of a sudden, it's funny. That, to me, uh, uh, is, is sort of depicts Alex Pines. Uh, event. <laughs> so uh, that's one of the things about Alex's seminars that bring out principles that you remember by having him punctuate with a scholarly discourse on some point that you wouldn't anticipate until he sees it, he brings it up, he stops the speaker, and he imprints on your memory new things and new ideas this way, which is quite unique and helps in the talent for that. Uh, and I've always enjoyed that and learned things from us uh, because of that. So it's all the so of all the students, uh, I believe. I will at least assume. Now, Alex has a sense of humor which uh, is kind of has no bounds. And his um, citation classic uh, has uh, contained in it phrases which sort of lampoon all of the uh, of scientific belief that existed in the past. And he brings them up and makes them relevant to the uh, train of thought pertains to the NMR. He sort of brings in phlogiston, he brings in Hermitian operator, and, uh, and, and the trees into human beings and so forth. He's very good at making analogs. You can all read that. I don't have to read it out to you. But, uh, and uh, he... Uh, he makes a joke of practically every phrase that you can think of. Some of them maybe come from somewhere else, but then incorporate them into his uh, lexicon, lexicon of humor. Uh, so that is one of the uh, uh, talents of Alex. By the way, he's a very good pianist, if you can just get back to it. I've had enjoyed playing sonatas with him. He's a very good Picture into the arts and music uh, as well. Now, uh, as Alex Good gets beyond 60, this is one of the famous cartoons in his wall. May Alex live to be 90, 95 at least. And uh, it says here, Daddy's 93 according to the latest carbon dating techniques. <laughs> so, uh, but we don't have the carbon dating, Alex. We don't is so he'll be so wise then. He'll just go on about 20 years after that. <laughs> and uh, that's one of his favorite cartoons. He, he puts them up as they come in and they go out. Some of them get stale and he replaces them with something fresh. Um, now, Alex has left a monument already to himself in terms of his works. His works are original, that I and solid stick, and, and, and there are new, such new developments that he should develop some sort of combination of Nobel Prize, uh, in my opinion, with others. And, uh, but I found a cartoon which uh, simulates uh, recognition, which Alex doesn't need, and it shows a proud-looking man on a big 
base discussion on it. And it says, a chemical physicist teacher offered, but still a disappointment to his mother. So, uh, that's the next one that everybody likes. Uh, but Alex always said, you know, the engineering physicist is not only a nice wife, but an astonished mother-in-law. <laughs> so, that's probably a used one for me. So, uh, I think, uh, to conclude, you know, uh, here we see Alex gleefully paying an indulgence fee to some guy he hired who, who got out of the local synagogue. And that indulgence fee is to make sure that uh, the Messiah will return after his special his sequence of puzzles. <laughs> so, if you know the story about the sequence of puzzles, but where uh, the Messiah will return, not just the echo, but other things. He paid me off. Uh, so, with that, there's a little bit of light humor, and with the opportunity of having revealed some of the <coughs> side phenomena of LX, besides being a genius, uh, but being as well a human being in many ways, it's my pleasure to conclude my rendition. Thank you very much.
son of war went up to Berkeley, came back and said, so what did Hans say? He said, Hans said, with that many pulses, I could bring back the Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story that I was The second, this was in 1969 or so, in 71, War was invited to the first Isma Congress in Israel and couldn't go and said to me, you know what, I don't usually do this. I, he never sent students before. I'm going to send you to this one because I think you're going to handle it. And talk about this Tyro Russian experiment in Israel, the first Isma. And so I go there to the first Isma and sitting in the audience are Han, Bloch, and I won't mention the other all the big shots. I'm a graduate student. And Owen will attest to this. In fact, he reminded me of the story some time ago. I thought to myself, oh my god, Felix Bloch is in the audience. And I gave my talk on this time reversal, at the end of which Felix Bloch put his hand up and said the following I would like to ask a very stupid question. And I remember saying to myself, Goodbye, Pines. It's been nice knowing you. And um, he then asked this question, and in a very naive, honest reaction, I said, Hey, that really is a stupid question. <laughs> and Bob said, Yes, but would you answer it anyway? <laughs> Uh, Owen was also um, a hypochondriac. 